when a few weeks ago, John called me up and said, John, uh, can you present at MIT uh, in his uh, wonderful conference? Uh, so I thought about it because everybody knows last week was CES. We were very, have a wonderful time at CES. And I was supposed to go to Asia today. So I actually flew right back to give the talk so tonight I can fly to Asia. Why do I do that? Well, MIT is our home. It's my home. We actually spun out from MIT. Uh, I went to Berkeley, and then went to Harvard, and then went to MIT. Lincoln Laboratory, we were working on nanotechnologies. Then in the 90s, we were actually working on wearable. So I would go back a little bit later. So John just mentioned, oh, yeah, if our company were in Silicon Valley, we would be a billion dollar company. Well, we were a billion dollar company. Our public company went to three billion. Three billion dollar market cap, why? Well, at that time, we had to develop transistors for cell phones, smartphones. Nowadays, nobody here in this room holding a cell phone does not have a transistor in there. Because with a transistor there, so stock went way out, out of hand, went to about $3 billion. Then, then, about five, six years ago, we sold our business, our cell phone business. We're 100% wearable now. We provide all the components to the wearables. Go to all the militaries. All the militaries almost all use our wearable. Actually, we make small displays, and we also make voice chips. We also go almost in every enterprise systems. Almost it's hard to find an enterprise system that's not using ours. Okay. So because of that, we're kind of behind it. We're behind the scene. So we see a lot of things going on. So now I'm going to tell you what well, we think the guidelines to make AR systems, especially mobile AR systems, to be successful in the mass market. This is what the purpose of my talk. But however, I think we should walk back about 25 years ago. 25 years ago, DAPA called me up. DAPA, not called me up, called a whole group of people up. They want wearable soldiers. They want to put computers on soldiers' head. At that time, it was CRTs. So we propose, to, you say, you've got to get digital solid state display. That's why I think John mentioned it. they gave us $50 million, $10 million a year for five years to develop this digital display. Plus, they also ask us to build systems. We actually build systems. Many of you, maybe not many, only the white hair people remember, MIT Media Lab is very much in it. Steve Mann, I, I think Steve Mann's in the room. They're wearing, he was wearing around in the media lab uh, that mobile computers. But five years later, we stopped the project. DARPA, us, everybody. Boeing was with us, Rockwell, Hughes. The problem is the computer was, hang, it's a portable computer hanging down your belt. Second, there's no way to do the interface. The interface was a little keyboard. It's not hands-free. That's why they want hands-free mobile soldiers. So we stopped the project, then we moved our technology to make the transistor, which brought us to $3 billion. Now, five, six years ago, we sold the, sold the transistor business, 100% went to stealth and make components for the wearable. So with that background, I will give you, I'm, I'm not a human behaviorist, I'm a technologist, but I'm going to talk about it and say, technology is too much. Let's stop. Well, of course, we're a public company, so we have to use the disclaimer I was told. So we can talk about AR and VR to be human-centric. It's actually mostly talking about mobile AR. Okay. We have to go back a long, long history. Okay? In the beginning, we really have animals, and there are millions of years, we finally get be upright on two feet. Now, once you do that, what happened? Well, we have the modern man. Modern man can see, see it, hear, communicate, can use our hands. We can manipulate our physical world. We are aware of our physical world. Okay? And we, our heads up, we can see the horizon to give you a large physical world space. Then what happened now? Our smartphone man. Well, that's why I got rid of the smartphone. I still have the smartphone, but I don't want that business. We no longer understand the physical world anymore. We have earbuds, we cannot hear the, the voice outside. We look down on the screen. 
So all of a sudden, we're immersed in this digital world or the, hand, or, or the virtual world. Uh, by the way, I want to make sure men are used, men and humans inter interchangeably. Not, so I don't want people later on get mad at me. <laughs> okay? So I also use digital world, virtual world very interchangeably. I use physical world and real world interchangeably, so today. But the Steve Jobs is excellent because he now has a screen. I can see the screen. I can manipulate the digital world in one screen. See it and manipulate the digital world. It's wonderful, but my problem is now we lost the physical world. So for the AR, I mean, there are many definitions of our edge on the reality. To me, it's really simple. We try to combine the physical world and digital world together. It's basically it. We combine them together. Is it possible we can do that? Well, first of all, it should be on the head. Our senses are on the head. Our eyes, our ears, and all on the head. So whoever is combining, combining the physical and digital world, it should be on the head. That we can understand. I don't think anybody would dispute with that. But my first rule, we're trying to, we actually work with a lot of companies on giving the guidelines how to be successful. We see so many companies succeed in failure. So we're setting some rules now. The first rule for a technologist is bad. The human comes first. Because in wearable, you wear on a person. You're a person, the person first. A lot of people don't understand it. You think the technology first, this is wrong. Human comes first. Okay? Technology actually comes second. <clears throat> what do you mean by that? Humans, by nature, do not want to wear things on their head. You've got to understand, our basic premise, you do not want to wear the things on your head. So therefore, we must have to encourage them to wear on your head. You have to encourage them to put it on. The next step is you encourage them to keep it on. Because you don't want to put it on, five seconds later, throw it away. I never use it again. Okay? So we must deliver some value. You've got to understand, people don't want to put it on their head. Why do you want to put it on their head? It has some head to have value. Okay? So why are the people willing to wear? We can take a look at the things that people are wearing today. Right? Of course, you have people in the middle wear glasses. I wear glasses. Why do you wear it? I mean, I have to correct my vision. If I don't have to correct my vision, I won't wear it. I won't wear it in sleep, right? So I wear it all the time because it had to be good looking, comfortable, and aesthetically good. Just because it correct my vision is not enough, okay? Then you have to go for this, this uh, helmet. All these helmets, they are protecting you of saving lives, of firemen, or you can talk. So all these things are people or sunglasses. People wear them for a mission, a benefits. They don't wear it because they want to. It's a reason you now people wear it because for fashion, but that's a still small subset. So therefore we have to think, what is the AR, the, the edge on reality help you? It's basically try to combine our physical world and digital world together. You've got to understand the physical world and, two, and digital world are here. Now, people are not going to reject the physical, uh, digital world now. We, we're used to digital world. So we have to combine them together in some way so people will leave it on the glasses. Otherwise, they reject them. So what is the most important thing? Most important thing, of course, we're in the military. We're in 90% of the military helmets, AR helmets, is all using our display. So you've got to save life. Okay? Then you have to overcome some physical limitations or visions. And many of us in the military, they make you see night visions. You can see in the dark. You can see around the corners. These are limitations or enhance the efficiency or enjoyment. So these are the benefits. And how does it rate itself? Well, this is the curve we plot in together. The willingness to wear them is versus the user's acceptance, the benefits of the users. Okay, all the way out in the, in the, in the right is the military. Military will do anything. Because they save life, or they save their own life. Or they, so they got to have, they, they will train it. Okay, later on we'll show you some military helmets. The second one we also believe is health and fitness. Everybody wants to be healthy, want to be fit. So therefore, I think health and fitness is actually very, very important. People don't quite understand it. The AR class should provide that benefit if it can. Then you have enterprise, you actually have it somewhere in the middle, it says fashion. 
We we didn't put down the fashion. The fashion comes in between enterprise and 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 the fashion, because people wear because of fashion. Enterprise, for entertainment and gaming, to me, I think it's a subset. We do want to entertain, but it's not saving life. We want to enjoy. Okay. So second rule is, it cannot be cluttered. Our virtual world cannot overwhelm the physical world or confuse the physical world. People don't understand it. I think you cannot provide too many data to them. The brain cannot absorb, and it will confuse. So many of the technologies, they can do it. So we put it on because we can do it. No, no, you are talking about humans. Okay, so the second rule is don't confuse them. Don't put jam everything in there. The third rule is situation awareness. This is something that people don't quite understand. We got human beings in such a way, we always want to be aware where we are. Because it's maybe for safety reasons, for other reasons. So if you get rid of the physical awareness, there are two types of awareness. One's the physical world, and then everybody has a physical circle, physical space around them. Their physical space is a smaller space, but you violate that, that's a terrible situation, okay? Now we actually are gonna use a new word. There's a digital space. The digital world is actually a broader world, but inside it, there's also digital, digital space. Facebook is a digital space. You have your real friends around you digitally. You also cannot violate that. So now we actually have three things going on, four things going on, physical world, physical space, digital space, digital world. Okay, so you have to do that, but you've got to maintain that. The way to maintain it, the sight is most important. The views, because you make views, and sound. That's why coping st stress and work on display and audio. These are two things that allow you to get this awareness. Okay. The fourth law is that uh, we have to be able to interact with the virtual world the same way as we do with physical world. Remember, AR glass is really combined the two worlds together. In the two worlds together, in the physical world, the vision and the sound is the most important. There are three other, uh, three other senses, but mostly vision and sound. So what happens in the virtual world, we want to do the same thing. V display, display, screen, and, and the sound. Final world, we've got to balance the design, the flair. People had to accept that. People willing to put it on. People had to put it on for a long time for the benefits. If you're not doing that, the design is failure. And if you don't have benefits, the system will be a failure. The benefit has to overwhelm the idea that I don't want to wear anything on top. OK, so these are the five rules. You've got to have human first. The virtual world cannot overwhelm the physical world. Okay? We have to balance it and we have to have enough interactions. So you have to manipulate the real world and physical world, a digital world. You have to manipulate them with views, with sound, and with vision. Just I could give a few examples. Well, F-35, F-35 for people know is the John Striker fighter, the most advanced fighter in the world right now. Well, they have this most advanced AI helmet. This helmet, I won't even tell you how much it costs. It costs mostly more than people's house, okay? And it's this AI helmet. It has many, many sensors. The pilot, of course, sitting in a, in a cockpit, but he has sensors allowed to see the whole thing, 360 degrees. Also has sensors to see dark and bright. But it's an AI helmet. So I will provide the display. We're the sole provider of the display for the F-35 helmets. How about this? I mean, they were aware because for any reasons, because they save life, they can fly the jet. The other one is actually very, very popular. We just introduced it about a year ago uh, with the Scott site, which is part of Tyco, now it's part of 3M. It is a fireman helmet. The fireman wears this helmet. They go into the fires, but they're on fire. But they could not see the fire or the dark. They cannot see through the doors. Well, so what we did is work with them to put an infrared sensor and screen for you to see it, so you can see the fire. They were weird. When you introduce it, voila, they sold out. So it's ramping very hard because it's not yet providing a, a benefit. It saves life. But remember, all these helmets are pretty ugly, heavy, uncomfortable. They only will wear it only when they do a mission. They take it off the minute it's finished. 
You gotta understand that if you want to do a mass adoption, you don't want to be something like that. They're not gonna use it unless you have something save your life. So what goes to the end of my talk? So what happened is out there, there's a solo self. Ernesto, can you sit up, stand up? Ernesto is going to talk about that tomorrow. Ernesto actually graduated from MIT Media Lab. Uh, three years ago, he came in and said, let's build that AR mobile glass. And that took us three years to build it. And he was our product manager. And we think that it, it combined all the rules. The rules I was talking about. It, we started with sunglasses that people use for cycling or running. Then we put technology into it. Then we put technology into it. We want to make it look good, make it look light. It's very light. It can willing to put on. Get the price is right, so people are willing to pay for it. And uh, we aim up at this function oriented. We got to be product had to be vertically oriented. This is where they call R for fitness and health. And I think if you want to see it, I think there's a there's a booth out there, you can see it. And he's also going to describe tomorrow. Why, how do we design it? Well, how do we take care of these five rules? You know, how do we take care of the physical world and the digital world? I think the world is going to be, digital world is here to stay. It's not going to get rid of the digital world. But physical world, unfortunately, evolution in such a way, and in person in such a way, you cannot live without the physical world. And I think physical world is more important. So less technology help self-serving the physical world, not the other way around. Thank you. Woo